subscapularis. Uh, okay, now subscapularis starts where? On the outside or the inside part of the scapula? Inside. And where does it go to? Lesser tuberosity. Lesser tuberosity. Okay, all right. So it goes and attaches to that small mountain on the inside. Okay, good. So it's on the inside. It is one of the muscles that does this. Yeah. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 No. Right. It's an internal rotator. It's an internal rotator because uh, it attaches on the inside, so it pulls inside. It's, that means it's an internal. Okay, that's right. It's an internal rotator. Okay, so it's an internal rotator. So it's what? It's one of the muscles that does that then. It's yep. one of those? Oh, okay. So what nerve root level is that one? C6. C6. Ah, C6. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay. So if it was bilaterally weak, what nerve root level would we be working on with our special little technique? C6? C6. Okay. C6. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, so what do we do with uh, subscapulars? It's hard to mark this one. I don't think we'll mark it because I'll be marking on the inside of some of these. Can we still... Armpits. Can we still do the fascial release on C6 if it's only unilateral weakness? Or only if it's, if a, it's, it's bilateral a, it's weakness? A, it's, a, it's not a fascial release, it's, a, it's an actual mobilization technique. Okay, but yeah. can we do uh, if it's only unilateral weakness of the subscapularis? Well, you wouldn't need to do it because if it's unilateral, it is a trigenic sign. Okay. If it's bilateral and you do the uh, my neural, the, the manipulation, the uh, mobilization procedure, right? Okay. Then, usually or often, it will bilaterally strengthen, as it did. Whose case did we do that with? We did that with. Yep. Huh? Yeah. So, well, but if it doesn't bilaterally, great. If it doesn't bilaterally strengthen, and one gets stronger, and the other one stays weak, then what would we do? And we do the trigenics on the one that's weak, yeah. and then we have both of them strong. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, subscapularis, we're going to lie on your... We're going to sit, 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 sit. Okay. And he is putting himself in a specific position here. What position would this be relating to subscapularis? Elongated or contracted? How many say elongated? How many say contracted? Contracted? Subscapularis? Okay, so let's remember infraspinatus. Let's think back to infraspinatus. What was the contracted position of infraspinatus? That position. This is it. So infraspinatus is doing the opposite motion of subscapularis. Right. Contracted for subscapularis here. Lengthened is here, right? Okay. And then therefore, if this is the lengthened position, if we want to test the length, we just do it bilaterally. And I use my wrists, hold up the elbows with my hands and use my wrists to see. Okay, so the right one is going back farther, the left one is a little bit short. So it's that damn left one again, huh? Mm -hmm. So the left one's a little bit short. Now this muscle is a particularly important muscle in the treatment of shoulder conditions. And very often, subscapularis will also be involved. And if you read enough MRIs like I do every single day for shoulders, you'll see that subscap does pretty often get involved in these nasty shoulder problems. So it's definitely an important muscle as well. And it's the fourth rotator cuff muscle. What are the first three again? Infraspinatus, supraspinatus, teraspinatus. In that order? Supra. <laughs> what order? Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus on top. Infraspinatus and teres minor. And the next one underneath that is sub. 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 It's the sub. The sub is the submarine, right? The submarine down at the bottom. Yeah. Submarine at the bottom. So the submarine is subscapularis. That's the one at the bottom. That's the submarine underneath all of the other ones. Okay, subscapularis. All right. So what muscle would somebody be using who was pitching and throwing a ball. Subscapularis. Subscap okay. All right. Hmm? A tennis player might be using subscapularis. Yeah, might be subscapularis. Okay. All right. Good. 
So let's just see. When did the light test? Now let's do the strength test. What, what position would he be in for the strength test? This position? No. 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 This position? No. 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 Oh, no. Yeah. This position. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Hold it here as hard as you can. Hold it. And I'm going to try to break it. Let it go. That would be weak. Okay. It's very similar to an uppercut. Uppercut. Okay. All right. Now. That's great. So we've tested that on the intestinal side. Now we need to know how to lengthen and how to strengthen. Oh, geez. We got to get it down and dirty into the armpit. Let's do it. Okay. Line well, your back here. So we need to do a lengthening procedure. Now, the only thing that's a little bit dangerous about this particular lengthening procedure is that if you don't do it with everything stabilized uh, properly, uh, you could dislocate the patient's shoulder. You don't necessarily want to dislocate the patient's shoulder. So we want to be very careful to make sure we do this correctly. Come over towards me. So, what we're doing here is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in with my fingers right directly into the axilla, right up into the armpit. Why? Because the, if we go into the armpit here and we go down a little bit, we will hit the anterior surface of the scapula, which is where this muscle attaches here. And in that case, he's painful. Let's check the other side. Might be painful on both sides, but it might not be as painful not as on the side. A little, side. but not as much. No, no, I'm definitely pressing. You can see the arm moving around. Definitely not as painful, but when I touch this side, for some reason, it, it, it doesn't feel the same. It's kind of like <laughs> striated or something. In there. It doesn't feel normal. It feels like it's been damaged. That's what it feels like to me. So we're going to come in on this muscle here, and we're going to hold this here, and we're going to make sure we stabilize the elbow as well. And we're never, ever going to suddenly press this arm down because this will dislocate. So we have to be very careful. Breathing in, breathing out. Usually when I do this, I have my staff helping me, and they actually hold the head of the humerus in place and put a lot of pressure on it. Let it go. Relax, and they will cut the humerus and hold this to make sure that I don't actually cause any damage. Breathing in, and go. I'm going straight in, and what almost seems like, let it go, relax. I'm going in, I'm not going straight down, I'm going in. So that's where you're getting this, and I'm feeling the contraction really of this muscle there. here. Breathing, and go. But I'll use the Bible cusser more on this usually. Breathing. And go. Boy, he's starting to look like a pitcher now. You see how those arms going back so far? Now, when he relaxes, you see I very gently take it back. You see how gently I take it back? Very gently, very carefully. Breathing in. And go. And relax. Very gently, very carefully. Okay. Now, let's check the length of it now. Oh, we can just do it this way. It's pretty close to the other side, I would say. It feels like the anterior capsule is, the anterior uh, uh, musculature is also short. So this is very simple. I'm gonna use a heel palm contact. I'm gonna distort the entire bulk of muscle with my, uh, with my um, plaza point. <clears throat> Breathing in, and go. And relax. Breathing, go. And let it drop. Beautiful. All right, let's see it now. No, it's looking pretty good. All right, great, let's stand up and sit up and check it this way now. 
Uh, it's sure a lot farther back than it was before, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how do we strengthen it? Okay. Back there again, let's go in here. And so if we're strengthening, we're going to approximate as fully as possible. So we're going to take the wrist and we're going to pull it all the way over. Okay. I'm going to come in with the other hand this time, still in on the muscle. Now, geez, where is that muscle? Oh, man. How can I find the muscle? I, I've lost it. How can I find the muscle? Oh, I can have him press his hand down, go internally rotate. Oh, there it is. It's popping up. I found the muscle. Okay, great. There we go. All right, I got the muscle now. I'm on it. I've confirmed that I have the muscle. That's good. Now I'm going to apply the light resistance and the light uh, motion in the opposite direction, which is external rotation. This way. I can feel stuff moving around in there. Right? Breathing. Now it's a lot of. There's a lot of initial traction this way. Breathing and go. No, no. You you just let you just move this very lightly and relax the muscle as I'm pressing. Breathing. Go. No, no. It's gonna. You'll feel it contracting. If he, he's got to focus just on lightly external rotating. Go very light. More. There. There. That's it. See how he had to focus breathing. Go. Easy. And if I want to, I can change hands. I could also just do it this way. Breathing. It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay? Literally, your hand is just almost going <clears throat> straight in. Okay, along the surface of the scapula. That way. It's a multi pennate muscle, so it's fan like. So it's okay. It doesn't matter the direction too much. All right? That's it. Any questions? No? Okay, this will be our last muscle for the night. Once we finish this muscle, you guys can go home and we'll be here tomorrow at 10 a.m.